Good evening, all, and uh, so honored to be here at eBridges 2021. I know that you know COVID has certainly thrown quite a few wrenches in all of our lives, but you know to be able to still convene uh, and perhaps even have a few folks here this evening and this week that uh, couldn't have otherwise made it is, I think, probably a silver lining. So I'm Avery Bang, and I'm the past president and CEO of Bridges Prosperity. Uh, there's a new exciting transition that's happening, and I'm moving into a new leadership role. But as one of my final remarks, I thought I would join you here this evening uh, to thank the award winners and also certainly the conference uh, folks here um, in telling you a little bit about my experience in the direct human impact of infrastructure. So to get started, I like to ask folks if you could just imagine what it would be like to not be able to get to where you need to go. What if you couldn't get to the market? What if you couldn't send your kid to school? What if you weren't able to walk to work or be able to go to uh, you know, a place to be able to sell your goods? Now, imagine this, imagine you live on the Blue Nile, you're in Gondar in Ethiopia, and imagine for the last 100 years since this bridge broke, that the only way to be able to go past the fourth grade or the only way to be able to go to the regional healthcare clinic was to get six of your best friends on either side of the river to hold this rope and to make it across. I mean, it's, it's an imagination that frankly, like as a young engineer just out of uh, graduate school, I lived and worked in this area. I was able to work with the local folks to build a bridge to make it so that wasn't their case. But as you can guys all know, as uh, bridge folks yourselves, there's a before and after situation. And while you're there designing and building that infrastructure, you have the opportunity to see what you're replacing in firsthand. And uh, I can assure you, I did not go across this particular crossing on that little uh, rope situation. We had a little bit more of a temporary crossing, um, but it was a life-changing experience and something that functionally shifted my career in a profound way. But as most of you know, you don't need to go work for a charity or full-time anyway, uh, or just quit your day jobs in order to create impact. It's each of you that are designing and building the world around us, and I think particularly the bridges, that are really transforming the world at large. So a little story of impact of these bridges hopefully translates back to each of you and helping us ground back in the importance of our shared work. When I first started here in Ethiopia and was getting a sense of, wow, I cannot believe people hang on a rope to get to where they need to go, I had no idea that over a billion people around the world, so that's you know more than one in seven, literally live outside of being able to get to the nearest goods and services year round. So you literally wake up in the morning, one in seven people, and they're like, I'm not sure if I can get to school today. I'm not sure if I can get to a job. And for those of you that I've met before or we've talked about, this is something I still cannot accept 15 years into this work. How is there such a huge global injustice that that many people are isolated? It's pretty baffling, frankly. The bridges and specifically trail bridges are a really amazing solution. So not only are children able to get to school, jobs are secured, farmers and farming profitability is improved and healthcare is much more accessible. And at Bridges to Prosperity, we've spent the last 20 years really focusing on this. How can we focus on these trail bridges, cable supported structures for those of you watching, uh, but cable supported structures that are really going to change the game for these rural billion people. And we actually imagine a future where poverty caused by rural isolation no longer exists. And we think we're gonna be a big part of that. Uh, to date, we've built over 350 bridges and connected over 1.2 million individuals. And these are not 1.2 individuals zooming in in their cars. Um, although obviously, as I said earlier, that's wildly important as well. These are 1.2 million people who used to walk through a river and hope that they could make it to the other side that today are being provided safe access. For many of you in the audience, I wish we were here in person. I would thank you personally and do more of a shout out. But the way that we've gotten here has been through a deep engage engagement Wait, wait, wait. 
the things that we were really thought was quite important is not to just imagine that bridges are, are creating good sustainable impacts, but to also partner with research institutions to validate that assumption and you know, be open to the idea that possibly we in fact are not creating the impact that we believed. And what's been really interesting about this study and, and frankly infrastructure and transportation infrastructure in studies more in general, is that a lot of the findings might be obvious, get to school quicker, more kids attend, more women are getting uh, attended, you know, vaccine, uh, you know, attended births and have the higher vaccination rates. That kind of makes sense, right? But what I didn't realize when we first engaged in deep research was that access is transformative for economies. And that's important here in the global north, but wildly so when you're thinking about emerging frontier markets in rural communities and the poorest billion in the world. People who live in less than $2 a day and the ability to change their profitability, 75% just by having access is a game changer. That can be the difference between being able to have a meal today and not. And that's what the impact of trail bridges have. At Bridges to Prosperity, you get asked a lot, so what's the big plan? What do you, how are you accomplishing this? And what we really came out um, in, in, we think a pretty grand fashion before COVID hit was an imagination that we, in partnership with the government, could actually solve the problem of rural isolation for an entire country. And the way that we did that was we effectively bundled a bunch of projects, uh, over 300 to be exact, and went and partnered with the government of Rwanda, Ministry of Infrastructure and Finance and Local Planning, and said, well, what if we were to build all of these in partnership with you, let's co-finance it, and actually be able to build a model uh, that can be replicated around the world of solving the problem of rural isolation. We are about you know, two years into the program, everything's going splendidly well. And like many of you, um, you know, the big wall of COVID hit us. Also, like the construction happening around the world, the first and most important step that we took when we realized how se severe and significant this was, was to ensure the health and safety of all of our personnel, and of course, the structures in a not so distant future, to make sure that whether we wrapped up a site uh, for two weeks or two years, that we weren't going to have any sort of safety hazards for these rural communities. And then as a business person, of course, I also had to remember like cash is king and make sure that we did everything we could do to preserve and really elevate Bridges to Prosperity during this difficult time. I'm very, very pleased to announce that as of just about two months ago, Hello, this is Nicola Turrini. Hi, I'm Maria de Rodriguez. We are in Rwanda, and today we are in the Nyarusange Bridge, one of our longest bridges. It's 132 meters long and was opened just two months ago. This trail bridge represents a great addition to the infrastructure of the region. And we cannot wait to have our partners traveling back to site and support the construction of many more bridges like this one which alone connects more than 4,000 people to essential healthcare, education, and economic opportunity. We miss you, and we cannot wait to be able to host you again in Rwanda. Thank you, and bye. Great to hear from Maria and Nico from the field, and obviously we're really excited to be here with you this evening. Um, but just to kind of leave you with this, I'd really encourage each and every one of us to remember the human impact of this infrastructure and these bridges that we are building. This is not just about you know, the, the technical specifications and certainly the interesting innovation, but we are all here connecting the world. And as society and the world at large starts to come back together and starts to really remember the importance of connection and encourage all of us to remember that this infrastructure is life-changing, even if folks uh, don't totally appreciate and always ask for it. As Nico mentioned, we're also, very excited to welcome you all back. So for those of you on this call who've been on Bridges with us before, thank you. We look forward to having you return hopefully soon. Uh, and for those of you that are interested in getting involved, please let us know. And most importantly, this evening, congratulations to all of the award winners. We are deeply inspired by the work that you do and really look to you guys as leading the industry of helping us understand how even these very, very simple trail bridges uh, can really create the impact uh, around the world that we hope they do. Thanks again. Hope you have a good evening. Goodbye.